Hi guys, welcome to Off the Path Learning. So although we're heading into winter right now, I'd like to go back in time and present to you one of the most important midsummer herbs. It's said that this plant captures the sun's energy and can bring light into our lives during the darkest days of winter. If you're into natural healing, then you for sure know this plant. It's considered nature's number one antidepressant, and it's been used for thousands of years by prominent figures all throughout our history and it's well within your reach. As I studied this plant, I discovered that my ancestors, my clan, many centuries ago carried this flower as a badge of identification. So I feel really honored to be able to present this plant to you today. St. John's wort is really easy to identify and to differentiate from anything else growing out there in the wild. It's a perennial plant, meaning it will come back year after year on its own. It has a creeping rhizome root and it germinates easily from its seeds. And so you can easily grow this plant in your garden. It's got two key identifying features which will make it very easy for you to differentiate it from anything else. Number one, it's got translucent dots in the leaves. You should be able to see these very easily if you hold the leaves up to the sunlight. Now these tiny dots are actually small oil glands. And legend has it that because this herb is so good, such a powerful ally to us, the devil couldn't take it. And in his wrath, he attacked the plant with thousands of puncture wounds. The second key identifying characteristic of St. John's wort is that if you crush the flower buds, your fingertips will turn a deep red. This is said to be the blood of St. John because this plant is said to have been created when the blood of St. John the Baptist fell on the ground after he was beheaded. This plant's use predates Christianity, but during the Catholic Church's reign, it was named after St. John because the best time to pick this plant is around St. John's Day, or on La Saint-Jean for my fellow Quebecers. Now, I don't need to tell anyone from my province when Saint-Jean is, but for the rest of you, it's on June 24th. So it's right around summer solstice when the sun's energy is at its most powerful. Now, truth be told, St. John's Word is actually best picked a little later than St. John's Day. For me, it's around mid-July and I feel like it's the same for just about everyone. You should gather St. John's wort on a sunny day when the flowers are dry. The flowers are at their best just as the buds begin to open. If you don't see a deep red color when you press the buds between your fingertips, then you're either too early or you're too late. So we kind of delved into the ancient history of this plant a little bit, but I'd like to go even further.
Okay, so the idea that this herb protects against evil and darkness was a common theme in my research, and so I think it's important to highlight it. St. John's wort seems to be very much connected to the sun, bringing light into our souls, chasing away darkness, warding off evil, and protecting against illness. But this is not just folk tales, it's proven science. St. John's wort is primarily used today internally to relieve symptoms of anxiety and depression. It helps treat seasonal affective disorder, PMS, menopause, and insomnia. It's able to do this thanks to the fact that it contains many biologically active compounds, namely the powerful polyphenols hyperforin and hyperisin. Hyperforin has the ability to calm and strengthen our nervous system. It contributes to emotional stability by slowing the uptake of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. This makes them stay in our bodies longer, and this makes us feel good. The hypersyn oil in St. John's is really transformed sunlight. St. John's wort is so saturated with light that it can pass these light effects to us. It has potent antiretroviral activity and has a proven use in the treatment of HIV AIDS, herpes, and hepatitis. St. John's is so good at transferring sunlight, you actually need to be a little careful about it. This plant can create photosensitivity in a small number of people, and so the fact that this plant can sensitize the skin to sunlight is usually given as a warning. But really, this is what brings about some of the most beneficial healing properties. When using this plant for cancer, viral infections, or vitiligo, patients expose their skin to sunlight to enhance the effects of the herb. The most important thing you need to worry about when it comes to St. John's wort is its effect on any important medication you may be taking. The plant increases the liver's production of enzymes, and so it boosts detoxification in the body. And although this should be seen as a benefit, if you're taking any prescription medication, it could mean that it doesn't stay in your system long enough to have its usual effect on you, which could have some serious consequences. Alright, so now that we've gone over everything, it's time to go over how you can easily interact with this powerful Nervine that can positively affect your attitude and outlook on life. So we know now that next summer, around the summer solstice, we'll be looking out for this beautiful sunny yellow flower. When you find it, take a minute with it, smell it, take in its incredible scent and taste. You can nibble on the leaves and flowers, they're so fresh and light. If the buds stain red in your hand, then you've reached St. John's wort at the perfect time to harvest. All aerial parts of the plant can be used, but you're mainly going for the leaves, the flower buds, and the flowers. Now for most uses, you want to use the fresh plant. I have a habit of just automatically drying out my harvest at the lowest temperature I can for easy preservation and also to eliminate the chance of mold and mildew growing in my medicine. With St. John's, you need to use fresh or a couple days wilted flowers to make potent medicine. If you're making your medicine and you don't see that deep red color come out in the oil or alcohol, then something is not right. For use as a tea, having dried, stored flowers and leaves works fine. But for making a tincture or oil, you should be using the fresh plant. For the tea, St. John's wort belongs to the same botanical order as black tea, so it has a very pleasant taste, definitely one of my favorites. The tea is not a diuretic, so you can drink it before bedtime with no problem. It's particularly good to take during the long and dark winter days. It will calm your limbic system. Infusions can be used to combat influenza, cold sores, and HIV. But if you want to get more from St. John's, you could go ahead and make yourself a tincture and an oil. 
these potent medicines will relieve and treat anxiety, tension, nerves, pain, insomnia, depression, and chronic viral illnesses. The oil you will get is one of the best remedies for trauma to the skin. Use it for muscle and nerve pains, lower back pains, sciatica issues, acne, psoriasis, and burns. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. The main thing I wanted to communicate with you through this video is that St. John's wort is a plant that is devoted to the sun like no other. If you interact with it, it will bring light into your soul and chase away darkness. The next time you see St. John's wort, I hope you say hello.